Thank you, Lord. Christians are lights in this dark world, according to Philippians 2.15. And they reveal the unfruitful works of darkness, according to Ephesians 5.11. When Joseph began to serve as steward in Potiphar's house, remember Joseph and Potiphar? He had a blessing of God and everything that he touched seemed to turn to gold until he got into Potiphar's house. And because he refused to sin, he was falsely accused and thrown into prison. The government officials in Babylon schemed to get Daniel into, into trouble because his life and work were a witness against them. Jesus, by his very life on earth, revealed the sinful hearts and the deeds of people and is part of the reason why they crucified him. John 15, 18 to 25. In 2 Timothy 3, 12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, maybe that's why we are reticent to completely give our all to God. Because none of us wants to be persecuted. We don't want to deal with that. And yet it's what God calls us to. And if we're really sold out to him, it's what's going to happen. People are going to think we're crazy. If we are to maintain a good conscience, we have to deal with sin in our lives and we have to confess it immediately. 1 John 1, 9. We need to keep the window clean. And the only way to do that is to keep polishing it every day. We also must spend time in the word because that's the only way that we let the light in. A strong conscience is the result of obedience based on knowledge and a strong conscience makes for a strong Christian witness to everyone around us and occasionally with words. It also gives us strength in times of persecution and difficulty. These are the times when we're going through something like we, what we've been a witness to and a living through for the last few months. This is where we lean on our strength of God. This is where we lean on him. Not our own thoughts, not our own beliefs, not our own understandings, but on him. It's the only way we're ever going to get through it. No Christian should ever suffer because of evil doing, and no Christian should be surprised if he suffers for doing good. Our world is so mixed up that people call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness. Isaiah 5.20 told us that we were going to have days that were coming like that, and we're living in the middle of them. The religious leaders of Jesus' day called him a mal malefactor, which means a person who does evil things. Jesus, the only sinless human being on the history of the planet. And they said he did evil things. How wrong people can be. As times of difficulty come to us, we must cultivate Christian love, for we will need one another's help and encouragement as never before. And boy, isn't that true. Is that part of our frustration? Not feeling the love, not feeling the encouragement. We must also maintain a good conscience because a good conscience makes for a strong backbone and a courageous believer. The secret is to practice the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Fear God. We need not fear men if we fear him. Shame arises from the fear of men, said Samuel Johnson. Conscience from the fear of God. So today, the simplest, straightforward application to 
How we prepare for the best is to fear God. Put him first in our life. Put him center in our life. And the reason why I'm, I'm being so careful about how I'm saying that, for a long, long time, I've preached and heard, put God first in your life. And we read a book a couple, three years ago in the book club where we looked at what that means. And for a lot of people, that means, yep, I get up in the morning, I pray, check that off my list, read my Bible, check that off my list, and now I can go live my life. That's not what it means to put God first. And in that book, it said that what we really need to do is put God center. Make it be the pinpoint focus of our day. Decisions we make, the walk we take, conversations that we have. Invite him in to all of that. That's what it means to be prepared. We need to sell out to him, all of us. None of us are perfect at it yet. But we need to work at it day by day. So the answer is simple. Let's fear God and not worry about man. Let's pray. Father, uh, thank you for how you put things in your word to us. All those different writers with your spirit working through their, their hearts. For Peter, as he shared with us ways that we can be prepared for the most difficult walks in our lives. And Father, this has been a long one. It's been a brutal one. We feel beaten and bruised, kind of like the lion who kind of got beat up a little bit by the elephant. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to heal in you, to feel your strength, your comfort, your peace pouring in and ebbing through us. Help us, Lord, to lean on you that our consciences would be clean, that we would be practicing the lordship of Jesus in our lives. But most importantly, Father, that we would be loving one another as you've called us to. Lord, we love you and we know how much you love us. You've proven that time and time again. Guide us, we pray in all of these things, in Jesus' name, amen. So as we go and we sing, I, 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 uh, I'm looking forward to us going out and singing tonight, th this morning. Um, let us go with God as we do that.